Tonight on Q2, in the blink of an eye. And all I saw was headlights and airbags. One Billings woman involved in a serious accident is thankful in more ways than one. I just kept screaming for help. Plus, small town big celebration. It's an extra special service in Broadview as a longtime church turns 115 years old. And a legend in the making. Hoping to make the NFR, you know, at least qualify like 20 times, 30, you know. One young Harden boy has the skills and name for the national stage. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for wrapping up your weekend with us. I'm Jackie Coffin. The Israel-Hamas war is now one week old with the death toll climbing by the day is around 4,000 have died on both sides, including at least 29 Americans. That war began last Saturday after Hamas's gruesome attack on southern Israel. Tonight, Israel says a ground invasion of Gaza is imminent, while deadly airstrikes continue to hit maximum terrorist areas. Israel has cut off food, fuel, and medical supplies, leading to a humanitarian crisis for millions of people in Gaza. At the same time, Hamas's rocket barrages are showing no signs of letting up, forcing people in Tel Aviv and across Israel to flee for cover. U.S. warships are standing by in the region in case U.S. military support is needed. President Joe Biden has made clear the United States' unwavering support not only for Israel, but for Ukraine. We can take care of both of these and still maintain our overall international defense. We have the capacity to do this, and we have an obligation to. Meanwhile, Israeli leaders say they are doing whatever they can to rescue hostages that Hamas forced into Gaza during its horrific attack on Israel. A Billings woman lucky to be alive tonight after this scary hit-and-run accident early this morning. That accident happening in the blink of an eye near Billings Central High School. She has a long recovery ahead of her with several injuries, but mostly she's thankful for all those who came to her rescue. Charlie Kleps has this story. It was in this intersection of Broadwater Avenue and Division Street where one Billings woman was involved in a near-fatal hit-and-run accident. The incident has left her rattled, but mostly thankful to be alive. It was terrifying just to see headlights coming straight at you. Early Sunday morning, Chelsea Powers was making her usual drive home from work after closing. I was just heading home down Broadwater. But that normally routine trip quickly turned into her worst nightmare. I heard screeching around the corner. And and there was a truck that came and he started kind of fishtailing and came into my lane and hit me head on. That impact just before 2 a.m. Sunday morning was the last thing Powers felt before being left completely helpless. You don't know what's going on because the smell of the airbags, the airbags, and you can't see, you don't know what's going on. And then when you finally realize that you can't even move your leg, it's terrifying. Powers frantically called out for help, beginning to fear the worst. I thought I was going to die. I really did. I saw headlights and he was not going slow. And I got kids and I got family and I was terrified that they weren't going to see me again. Fortunately, that wasn't the case as nearby people jumped to the rescue in the blink of an eye. They didn't even hesitate. They bailed out and came and helped me right that door open and got 911 on the phone. Powers escaped the crash, but not without multiple injuries. She suffered a fractured wrist and ankle, as well as a broken knee, which will require surgery. She says whoever hit her must have fled the scene on foot. If you didn't mean to, then that's fine, but at least have a common decency to check on somebody to make sure they're okay. A frustrating reality for Powers, who now won't be able to work but still woke up grateful, knowing this could have ended much worse. I really appreciate everybody stopping and helping, because there's a lot of people that want it. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Many churches across Montana held their normal Sunday services today, but the celebration was a little more special in Broadview, where one of the state's oldest evangelical churches celebrated a milestone anniversary. Our Alina Howder takes us to Bethel Evangelical as it turned 115 years old. This Sunday, Bethel Evangelical Church is commemorating 115 years of serving the Broadview community, a joyous occasion that brought some of the church's former pastors from near and far to celebrate. 
It might seem like a typical service here at Bethel Evangelical Church in Broadview. It's awesome to look back at 115 years. Nobody in this room was alive, I know, 115 years ago. But that wasn't the case this Sunday, as it was the church's 115th anniversary. Our church is the oldest church in our network of churches in Montana, North Dakota, Wyoming area. Pastor Rory Adams wanted to pay tribute to the church's past on this day. The important thing we need to recognize is that really we're only here because of what the people who've come before us have done and we need we wanted to honor that. Several of the church's former pastors were invited to the service like Rod Griffin who came from Rapid City South Dakota to attend the celebration. Well, one thing that I did notice that changes is, is that they went from pews to soft chairs. And Bob Conover who currently lives in Red Lodge but grew up in the town of Broadview. According to Rory I served here from 1988 to 2003. When I came here I was I had had a very difficult ministry prior to this and and it would when I came here these people were just they helped me so much and and to get back on my feet so I really enjoyed it. Bob was even able to reunite with couples he had married in the past over a catered lunch at the community center after the service like the Lees. We love this church it's just been it's so community focused and just helping out around and just having that community is really nice. Ed attended Bethel Evangelical when he was just a kid and now it's come full circle. It's a place for our children to kind of grow up in. I mean, I got to experience it and now my children get to experience it. Pretty awesome to just celebrate God's faithfulness in the past and also look forward to expecting him to continue to do great things in the future. In Broadview, Alina Howder, MTN News. Thanks for all your great pictures at weather at KTVQ.com. Great shot of the crazy mountains there off in the distance. If you look carefully, you can also see some deer off into the field. Thanks, Kathleen, for sharing that one. John Potter shared a lot of pictures, but this is the one that just blew me away, John. Thanks for grabbing this one uh, from up into the Beartooths where, oh, he's get some beautiful shots. You see some of that frost and snow up there. Beautiful fall colors from Misty. Thanks for sharing that one. And how about this one of the Reflection Sherry shared this one. Always some beautiful pictures, still lots of green around. And of course, the eclipse got a lot of attention yesterday. So thanks, thanks, John. Here you can see the succession of the uh, solar eclipse from our point of view, but there's some, of course, some clouds around as well. Back with the forecast details. With a name like Legend, you may assume greatness would await, but few would guess it would come as quickly as it has for the young boy in our next story. Scott Breen shares his story in tonight's Positively Montana. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Hi everybody, Scott Breen on the outskirts of Hardin, where there's always been such a rich, rich basketball tradition. They'll tell you that, but you know what? Not for this guy. Well, my name is Legend Walker Rilberg. It takes a lot to live up to the name Legend, but this young man is doing it. He's grown up a rancher and a cowboy. It's in his blood. He started on a little mini pony. Uh, he would ride around when I went and practice, you know, rope in. And you release it, go. No surprise, he's not hooked on basketball. Mom and Dad say Legend was on his first horse at four months. Now he's only 11 and can probably teach a course on how to win team roping buckles. This caught a hand you, you bring it back up. If you're like over here, like your horse's head just hitting the steer basically. So gotta get over here. And he makes it look that easy. Here he is in action. Legend is a healer, meaning he tries to rope the steer's heels. The real story, though, he and his partner are saddled up for the Junior World Finals, their version of the National Finals Rodeo. In fact, the same week as the NFR, under the same bright lights in Las Vegas. He'll rope five days straight. Even more impressive, they had to qualify to get there and did it as 10-year-olds. Now they'll stare down and compete against ropers up to age 17 but Legend isn't one to back down from a challenge. Just need to practice a lot and you just get it done, you know. At one of his first dummy roping, he asked to climb on this giant, who the family bred right here at home. So he wrote this guy and uh, he just did it. And that was, I think he was seven years old then. His name's Blue. <laughs> Legend finishes a lot of his thoughts with those endearing giggles. And why not with his early success? 
Just look at this column of buckles. Now, cowboys travel quite a bit, which means he has to keep up with homework. He homeschooled from the state of Montana during the summer months. During the winter months, we sent him to a private school, and he gets to rope to his heart's content. Four years now, they've traveled to Arizona for a warmer roping climate, but legend knows where his roots are. I love this place, you know, where I grew up. It's my home country, you know. <laughs> Says the 11 year old going on 45. His dad recalls his proudest moment when Legend was only nine. I won a saddle with him, which was probably one of the best days of my life. Back to his namesake, a tribute to three of his legendary grandfathers Pete Fredericks, inducted to the National Cowboy Hall of Fame, Pius Reelberg, inducted to the Montana Cowboy Hall of Fame, and Gordon Reelberg Sr a member of Montana's High School Basketball Hall of Fame. It's a neat name. Nobody really has it these days. If you want to have that name, you got to really work hard for it, you know? Legend has that covered right now with some lofty goals on the horizon. Hoping to make the NFR, you know, at least qualify like 20 times, 30, you know? If that's the case, he'll tip his cover and ride into a lot of legendary sunsets. In Harden, Scott Breen, MTN Sports. It's the official sign of fall in Montana as general hunting season is now only days away. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks officials are asking hunters to get their game tested for chronic wasting disease before taking their kill to a meat processor or donating it to a food bank. CWD is a progressive fatal neurological disease that infects members of the deer family such as mule and white-tailed deer elk and moose. Once an animal is infected, it can spread quickly, potentially wiping out entire herds. CWD has not been transmitted to humans, but it's unknown if it eventually can or will be. Food banks across the state say there is always a need, but a negative test is necessary for safety reasons. 100%. Yep, our clients are in, in great need and they absolutely love that and we love, especially game, any type of healthy food. Um, you know, get it tested, bring it on down and we would by all means uh, put it to good use. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that hunters harvesting a deer, elk or moose not to consume the meat of the animal if it tests positive for CWD. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, beautiful beads, a crow artist now having his work shown all over the world and next to some pretty big actors. We'll have that story next. Download the free Q2 weather app by searching Q2 weather in your Apple or Android store.